Nasal septum. The nose is an important organ of the face. It performs major functions of respiration, olfaction, and provides aesthetics to the face. The nose can be divided into two main parts, external nose and the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is divided into halves by a flat midline structure called as the nasal septum, and this forms the medial wall of the nasal cavity. The nasal septum is made up of a bony part and cartilaginous part. Bones that make up the septum are superiorly the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone, posterior inferiorly the vomer bone, contributions from the nasal crest of the nasal bone, crest of the maxillary bone, crest of the palatine bone, nasal spine of the frontal bone, and the rostrum of the sphenoid bone. Cartilages that make up the nasal septum are the septal cartilage. This forms the anterior portion of the nasal septum. This is the flexible portion of the nose that can be touched and felt easily. The bony part forms the superior, posterior and the inferior part of the nasal septum, while the cartilaginous part forms the anterior part of the nasal septum. Arterial supply of the nasal septum. The nasal septum receives its blood supply from the branches of the internal and the external carotid arteries. The superior part of the nasal septum is supplied by the anterior and the posterior ethmoid artery. The antero inferior part is supplied by the superior branch of the facial artery. Posterior superior part is supplied by the spinopalatine artery. And the posterior inferior part is supplied by the branch of the greater palatine artery. These form a large capillary of network at the antero inferior part of the nasal septum, which becomes the common site of bleeding from nose and is called as the little area. Venous drainage of the nasal septum. Venous plexus is formed near the little area, and this plexus drains anteriorly into the facial vein and posteriorly into the pterygoid plexus through the spinopalatine vein. Nerve supply of the nasal septum. The nasal septum is supplied by the sensory nerves from the trigeminal nerve. Anterior superior part is supplied by the internal nasal branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve. Anterior inferior part is supplied by the anterior superior alveolar nerve. Posterior superior part is supplied by the medial posterior superior nasal branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion. Posterior inferior part is supplied by the nasopalatine branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion. The special sensory nerves are present in the upper part of the nasal cavity which are responsible for olfaction. Lymphatic drainage of the nasal septum. The anterior half of the nasal septum drains into the submandibular nodes. Posterior half of the nasal septum drains into the retropharyngeal and the deep cervical lymph nodes. Clinical significance of the nasal septum. Epistaxis. This refers to the acute bleeding from the nose. The arteries that supply the nasal septum form a plexus at the anterior inferior part of the septum, called as the Kesselbach plexus, and the area is called as the little area. This area is prone to bleeding, especially in kids and young adults because of finger trauma. Deviated nasal septum. The nasal septum is commonly situated at the midline. However, deviation of nasal septum can occur due to trauma mainly of the vomer bone or due to the developmental defects. This condition can cause mechanical obstruction leading to difficulty in breathing, snoring, headache and even sinusitis. Deviated nasal septum can be corrected by septoplasty or submucous resection. So to summarize, nasal septum is a flat midline structure that divides the nasal cavity into halves. It is composed of bony and cartilaginous part. Arterial supply is from the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries, superior labial artery, spinopalatine and the greater palatine artery. Venous drainage occurs in the facial vein and pterygoid plexus. Nerve supply to the nasal septum is from the anterior ethmoid anterior superior alveolar and branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion. Lymphatic drainage occurs in the submandibular, retropharyngeal and deep cervical lymph nodes. Clinically, it is important from the point of view that it can lead to epistaxis and deviated nasal septum. You can find the link to MCQs for the topic in the description of the video. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you liked it. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel for more videos and hit the notification bell for update on new videos.
So see you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.